<clears throat> All right, let's talk some Detroit Lions. Talk about the little boy, little kid, Tyree Cohen, saying in the second quarter that the Lions wasn't going to win. Also talk about Daryl Bevel doing something that Matt Patricia couldn't do in almost three years. But first, let's talk about Detroit Lions defense. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. It seemed like a very, very important and busy Monday for some reason around here. But, um... Excuse me, but um, yeah, man, they played 57% man coverage, 43. I mean, 57% zone coverage and 43% man coverage. So I knew when Romeo Cora said it was going to be a big, it was going to be a big shift um, as far as philosophy. I knew Corey Eulin was basically saying that you know thank Mac Patricia for you know giving him the opportunity, but it's definitely a big shift. You know, they played, they did more zone blitzing. You know, they played more zone, and it looked like they did a good job. Now, was it perfect? Absolutely not. But then again, Trubisky didn't throw for more than one touchdown. It was more of the run defense that held the Lions back, you know. And that's just due to, to lack of, you know, drafting the right personnel in the front seven. It ain't nothing that Corey Ewan and Daryl Bevel can do about it, you know. When John Panisi, your best interior lineman, then it ain't, I mean, you know, it ain't much you can do about it. What Bob Quinn did was he believed in building the back end to the front end, and that shit only worked in New England. And that's just the God honest truth. Uh, like Future said, I'm just being honest. You got to build your your front to the back end, and that's how you that's how you build a good uh, a good defense. And I was one of the guys. I'm one of the guys that believe you can have a great front seven and shitty back back end, and you still can win. I mean, the Eagles showed us that a few years ago. You know. And that's just the truth. But, yeah, I mean, it don't mean they got to be next year, if he you know, here or not here, that they got to be a great, they got to be a, a zone team. It just mean that when you don't get no push up front, it's probably better that you play a little zone. When you playing man coverage with no push up front, I mean, a lot of these receivers are going to be man coverage because if you don't, if you don't jam them, I'm not turning the wrong way. If you don't jam them, then you're going to be in trouble. You know, so I just think the zone concept is a lot better for how this team is built. But you can play man defense and be dominant. It's just that you got to have better play in the front seven. Then you asking them shitty linebackers to cover in man coverage. That ain't going to work. Your best cover linebacker is Jamie Collins. He got killed by somebody the other week, a running back. I think it was Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson, a good running back, but he ain't nowhere near the best running back, especially coming out the backfield. You know, but zone help all that. You know, zone is just like basketball. You just playing the area, playing the quarterback highs. How can you tell they playing zone? They usually turn towards the quarterback. Everybody that's in coverage. They just reading the quarterback, dropping back. How you tell them, man, they back towards the turns toward the quarterback. They playing, they playing the pass catcher, they playing the route runner. It's easy to spot man. Now you got a combination too. And that's what people got to understand. You got a combination coverage. And with combination coverage is, you know, you got zone and man going. You know, in some situations, you can drop. You can have your line, you got your, you got your corners and man, your linebackers and man, you got two deep zone. Or you can drop a lineman in zone coverage. You know, you got two man under is probably the more popular uh, man zone concept. Everybody in man. But the two deep safeties is covering the deep half of the field. And then you got um, robber, single high robber. You know what I'm saying? What that is is everybody in man, but usually it could be a linebacker or a safety. Depends. You know, you got a line, you got a safety drop in man coverage, and the linebacker beat a robber sometimes. More common, I believe it is safety high, guarding a deep uh, middle half of the field, and then you got another safety robbing underneath. Playing the kind of the playing the short middle of the field. I mean the deep middle of the field. So, I mean, it's a lot of different concepts you can do. I mean, ten, uh, the cover two is just corners playing the flats, passing them on to the middle zone, which uses the linebackers depending on what coverage, you, what, what personnel you is. And then you got the safety playing the deep half of the field. And then what's important about this defense here is you got to be able to have a, the two important things. You got to be able to have your front four get pressure, and then you got the middle linebacker who who's really taking a deep middle of the field boy well, you gotta have a Derek Brooks or Brian Erlacher to really play that half of the field but um 
but but yeah, man. I mean, yeah, zone coverage is you know, you know, make quarterbacks go through the progression, but you got to be able to squeeze those holes. That's the thing about it. You got to be able to squeeze them holes. If you don't squeeze those holes, you got an accurate quarterback. It's gonna be a long, 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 long day. Well, let's move on. Um, talk about Daryl Bevel, man. Daryl Bevel did something that Matt Patricia hadn't done in his entire time or entire tenure versus the uh, Chicago Bears. And before Patricia got here, I think we beat the Bears like two or three straight years. You know what I'm saying? It was easy. But Matt Patricia just had his number pulled by Mitchell Trubisky. And what Trubisky did good, Matt Patricia defense allowed him to do. And that's the big difference. You know, you look at Matt Patricia defense, uh, soft man coverage, no no pressure up front, just everybody in man and maybe doubling, maybe playing a little deep zone. And it was just easy to decipher. You know, in this, in this league where you can't really jam the receivers, you know, past five yards, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. Maybe back 20, 30 years ago, when you get physical with the receivers and you can hit them and draw the ball loose, his defense would have worked. But in this, you know, 2020 uh, version of football where they don't want to give the players lifetime benefits, so they just change the rules where you can't hit them, you know, hard. You can't hit the quarterback high or too low. You know, Matt Patricia's defense didn't benefit from this new 21st century version of football. You know, when you can get physical and beat them up down the field and hold them and hit a, you know, one no defenseless receiver, it worked. And Daryl Bevel just simply let Corey Ewan do what he do. He wasn't no Patricia hold him back. Patricia was, is a guy that's going to die with the scheme. He, he didn't change nothing from year to year. He kept blaming the personnel. He kept bringing in guys. And honestly, the guys that was here were more – the guys that was from Terrell Austin and the Jim Caldwell team were better in his system. You know what I'm saying? He come here – even Ziggy Ansa was injured when they played the Jets. He was still more pr productive in that game. He had like two or three sacks in that game. He was still more productive in that game than any defensive lineman, not named Romeo Cor was from Matt Patricia, any of his you know, New England guys. In that one game, Ziggy Ansa was more productive. Way more productive than any. You know, Trey Flowers came here. Oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt again. Terrible defensive lineman. In this league, you can't have them big slow dudes that they can't they can't, you know, run. You gotta have dudes that's that's fast, that can convert speed to power. And Trey Flowers is garbage. I've been telling y'all, oh, you hating on Trey Flowers. I'm not hating on him. He trash. You know, he just sitting here, you know, stealing the chase and let him go to Miami. Who don't want to go to Miami? No, why he chose Detroit? Trash. Jamie Collins thought he was going to be better than he. Trash. Tavai, trash. Deshaun Hint, trash. Davis, trash. Christian Jones, trash. I swear he was something. Trash. See, I'm back to Chicago with them Care Bears. But, you know, Dale Bevel did his thing. You know, he took shots down the field, you know. Um, the offense was better than I thought. I thought it was over when Stafford threw that pick. But then again... But then again, he did, he, you know, he came back and made the plays. He came back and made the plays. You got to tip your hat to Stafford. And people saying, oh, I thought Stafford sucked. Okay, this is a meaningless game. This type of game that the Lions win. No pressure on them. They won. But Daryl Bell did it in his first game. The team seemed more happy. They seemed a little bit more jubilee. You know, and Matt Patricia, you got to understand, this ain't, this ain't classic corporate America. You can't just say all oh, work and no play and no fun. You know, people ain't going to want to come here. You got to have some type of fun. But like I tell y'all before, that's corporate America. That's corporate America. They don't want you to have fun at work. They want you to be miserable. And the great thing I love about this generation is a lot of shit I hate, but they done paved the way for entrepreneurship to work for yourself. You know, and what, and, and what, and what we should do is start buying back the block. There's plenty of houses in Detroit, even if you don't live here. There's plenty of houses to have, buy, you know, for less than 20000 For 20000 or less. You know, find you some guys that you can fix them up and learn to fix them up. Man, it's houses. I'm driving by houses. When you buy a house for 20000 fix it up, it's going to be worth what? Shit. By the time by the time this junk jump, it might be worth 100000 That's what you gotta, you know, you gotta stop spending your money on bullshit. When you got kids, it's hard. But corporate America allows you to 
to drive Lyft, drive Uber, work 40 hours, you could take that Lyft and Uber money and buy a Coney Island, buy a few houses. You know, that's how I go. But man, let's finish off. Well, shout out to Daryl Bell for getting his first win. It has my opinion changed on Daryl Bell being the whole head coach. Nope, don't want him to be the head coach. No offense to him, but nope. He ain't nothing he could do the last few games. Even though a lot of fans was mad that we won that game uh, Sunday because a draft position. But then again, like some fans say, quarterback position not important. You know, it's not a half high draft priority, which is stupid. But you know, let's move on. Tyree Cohen, micro midget, mini Mike. He little as hell, man. My mama taught him micro than Tyree Cohen. That boy come up to my dick. Saying that in the middle of the game, we can't lose some lines. We lose some lines, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you're going to sit there and keep playing video games with your little ass. That's what you're going to do. A little bit. You're going to keep there. We came back. He said that like it was like four or five minutes left. And the first quarter before Stafford threw that bomb. We ain't losing the line. Sorry. This, that, and the third. What happened then? What happened? Where, where the Ghost of Tribe Judah? That was my guy. Where were he at? Where the Care Bears fans at? Came back and lost. Y'all lost five straight. Y'all got the audacity. To talk about sorry. We not lose. Y'all lost five straight. How can you be confident that Aaron Rodgers to put his foot so far up your ass? How can you be confident? How can you be five four? He ain't really five six. He five four. How can you be confident? Only thing I like about Tyreek Cohen, he went to an HBCU as I did. Oh, He's sitting in the chair, right? His feet probably dangling in the chair. I, I lose to the line, man. I don't know what we do. You know, my ACL still hot. Oh, man. We ain't losing to the line, man. Oh, man. Well, you know, he should be. He should shut the hell up because they paid him before they paid Allen Robinson. A real football player from the D. Oh, man. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. Oh, man. Damn. Damn, man. Oh, man. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I, I'm a little Tyree Cohen, man. Oh, man. It's stuff animals, stuff animals bigger than me, man. But yeah, man, that is what it is, man. Shout out to Tyree Cohen for going to HBCU, for, but he need to put his foot in his mouth because the Lions went bang, bang, bang up the Care Bears' ass. Hey, the Care Bears, you come on my channel and you mention the Bears, you better have the C word in front of it, the Care Bears, until they do something, man. And don't forget, Jake Cutler is the greatest quarterback in their history. That's saying something, man. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsor, video quest. All my social media links in the description. Twitter's the fast way. Facebook, Instagram. We've got business question, inquiry, sponsor, video quest. Want to chop it up? Or you want to advertise your business on the channel? Hit me up. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash up CJ Good 313. That link's in the description. PayPal link in the description as well. Best way to donate for me is share the video. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. We gone.